Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys the updates to my Grid Builder plugin for version 2.2. So there's a bunch of new control features inside of here. Let's jump into the top-down demo in order to show some of this off, and then I'll show you where to find the settings so that you can add it into your own implementation of the system. So in the top-down project, you'll see all the controls over here on the left. You'll notice a bunch of new ones added in. So we'll just go top to bottom, starting with the hold for multi-build. So if you have the build action, which is set to left click, then we can do a multi-build by first selecting our um, object that we want to place. And then you left click to start the build. And while you hold this and drag it across the screen, I'm going to move my mouse now, then we get a whole bunch more added in. So every time, so every time we move into a new tile, it's going to try to continually place the object into that area. So as long as it validates all of the rules, we can just keep creating in a line or go in any other direction we want. So currently every object's placing individually, but something else I want to look into is more of a line build feature where we just give it two points, left click here, move to a different point, let go of the build button, and then we would try to build a line of objects between those two points. Okay, so if you want to enable multi-build, then on your build system, you want to go into the settings and then there'll be drag multi-build here. By default, this will be off. If you toggle it on, then you'll be able to multi-build with your objects. So this would work with bigger stuff as well. So if I take the smithy here and I left click and drag it across the screen, then as soon as we move to a new space where all of the build rules are able to validate, uh, then it will try to place the next instance of that object in. Now, as we're moving between tiles, obviously we're going to get a lot of failure due to collision. But if you're implementing something like a build log to spit out messages, you can easily just check the is grid dragging property on the grid building system in order to see if you are currently press hold and dragging so that you don't have to spit out a million error messages to the console. In that case, when you hold dragging, you'd probably be more concerned with just when it's successful than when it fails. Let's just go ahead and try out this concave test object. So placeables that have rotate enabled will be able to be rotated and you can assign whatever key you want to it. So R to rotate left and you can keep doing that. T to rotate to the right. And these are just the keys I set for the demo. And we can of course left click to press and submit it. So just like before, we can keep using the drag build. Now, in cases like this where you're blocking collision, I might recommend uh, creating a wider placement area than the walls here so that uh, you basically have to have the bordering spaces be clear before you can uh, place a new object. That would just be a simple matter of adding another collision shape. Okay, and then lastly, we have G for flip vertical. So it doesn't make a lot of sense with something like a smithy here for obvious reasons. If we're doing top down, um, then we'd never have a building actually flip upside down like that. But uh, you have the option of setting it there. And you can see that when you flip or rotate, it also affects the tile collision indicators under it, as you would expect. So we can hit um, F to flip horizontal. Uh, once again, this won't make a lot of sense for a lot of top-down game objects. So how I have it set up so that you can enable flipping, but just not on every object, is you first set the action for flipping inside of the build system. Let's close out here and show that. So in import actions, you can see here that you can just assign whatever string name you want to the actions that you want to trigger these different um, moves for the build system, such as rotate right, rotate left, flip horizontally action, and uh, flip vertically actions. So if you don't have those set, the build system won't be able to trigger any of those actions. And so these actions, if you don't already know, you assign them up in project, project settings, and you can define an action name, which you would set over here, and then the keys that you use to trigger those actions. And that's really all you need to do on the building system side of things. And then on your placeable resources, which contain the settings for the object you're trying to place into the scene, uh, you would go into the placeable resource and there'll be new settings here, including rotatable, flip H for horizontal, flip V for vertical. So if these are not checked, then that specific object will not be able to rotate or flip. So obviously important to have it set up like this so that you can define which objects can be rotated and which ones cannot be uh, rotated or flipped. So if I was to toggle these off and we go back into play mode, um, then we can jump into the demo, select this gigantic egg, and I'll try pressing these keys to rotate and flip. So RT, and we get a message in the console, which says um, I can't be rotated. 
and that would also apply to flipping it horizontally or vertically as well. Now, just like before, when you have a build succeed or failed, you'd get a signal to be emitted. So now there's another signal inside of the build system called action failed. And in this case, I have the signal hooked up to the build UI in the demo, which can just show when a rotation or a flip fails. Now, you might prefer to suppress those messages. You don't have to print those out to any console log, or you could just play a little sound effect when uh, those actions fail to indicate that it was unsuccessful because it's not allowed. So lastly, but not least for this video, I want to show how you can stack objects using the new indicator tiles must collide rule which I'm adding to individual placeable objects, indicating that in this case, they can stack by using this rule. Um, so I'm gonna use it on the box prop and you'll see I'll be able to press here and drag upwards in order to stack a bunch of boxes on top of each other. Now you'll notice that there's two tile indicators and they work a little differently here um, for the box shape. If I walk in to the box area, then it's not going to allow me to move in based on collision. So same stuff, if I press there, then it will, will be able to fail based on collision because I'm checking for the player layer as well. But there's also the tile indicator under there. So you'll see that if I'm hovering above the ground, it'll allow me to place. And if I hover right above the ground, it does not allow me to place. So it's checking that the tile underneath actually has a collision on the layers that that tile indicator is looking for. So if I go up here, I can, well, once I get out of the way, I can press again in order to place. So the layer I've assigned to the box to allow placement is actually the same layer I'm using on the tile map for these tiles that are basically supposed to be ground. So you'll notice that same thing is not up here. It's just down here to mark a tile as buildable. So inside of here, and if you'll notice, each rule that uh, builds indicators or needs indicators can assign its own tile collision indicator scene. So you can have a different template for different rules. Let's jump into here and take a look at this rule. So I'm calling it the tile is buildable indicator, but really it's just a, a set of settings, a few sprites, and then this is a shape cast which checks to see if the rules inside are met. So in this case, I'm skipping checking for invalid tiles. I'm actually just checking for collisions. And I'm checking specifically on layer 11. So you can mark any layer, whatever you want it to be inside of your game. If I uh, edit here, you can see how I have the layers defined. So the world layer is the main collidable layer. So that would be your ground, your walls, your ceiling, and uh, the boxes themselves are on this layer. But a buildable layer, you could think of it almost like tagging an object or tagging a tile. By having it check for the buildable layer, we make sure that the tile that is inside of the indicator actually has that collision layer on either the object or the tile map. So what this looks like if we jump into uh, the platforming gameplay, and I'll jump into the world, and let's find that tile map. So for actually assigning a special physics layer to specific tiles on your tile map, first you want to go look into your main 2D level scene. So on the tile map, the tile set, you can hit add element down here in order to create different physics layers. So this is physics layer one and physics layer zero. You can see that on physics layer one, I'm assigning the world layer, which means that a tile would have physical collisions with other objects like the player and the rhino, as long as those objects are looking for layer one. But layer 11 over here, I'm using as a special layer where basically it's just to mark if a object should be able to be built on that tile or object with that physics layer or not. So when we go to tile set mode in Godot 4 and we would be doing paint, select a property in the editor, physics layer one, you can mark each tile that you want to have that buildable layer. So you can see I'm basically using just the top ground tiles inside of this tile set for that excluding uh, the platform. So we can't actually build the, the box on the platform because it's not marked buildable. I'm saying maybe because it's too flimsy to support a box's weight, uh, whatever your logic is there. But um, all these other tiles are buildable. So when our tile collision indicator under here checks that there has to be a collision, but it has to have a collision on layer 11, then only these tiles will be able to be built upon. So the reason for using the collision layers and not the custom data is of course because only tile map tiles have 
custom tiled data. Okay, so then about the boxes being able to stack on top of each other. If we jump into our box scene, so we can see on the static body 2D of box, the main physics object, that we have layers 1 and 11 marked. So it is a world collision object, but it is also marked buildable here. Now you might use a different layer if you need to get um, more specific than just buildable. Uh, maybe it would be a stackable layer or something. Uh, but in this case, because it matches on layer 11, we can actually build on top of the box. So only a object that is marked buildable that happens to be under the box would be able to allow the box to build on top of it and keep stacking. And then we can check the final part of the equation, uh, the ground check area 2D here. So this is the area marked by this shape down here, where we actually spawn the tile collision indicator on that is going to check for layer 11 collisions. So we can see this is marked layer 11 our tile collision indicator template is going to create a tile collision indicator at this space as we and it'll follow along as we move around the scene and as long as we have a collision here on layer 11 then it's going to meet that rule of requirements so hopefully that gives you a good overview of how stacking works with the grid builder system otherwise i recommend you jump into the demo and you just um, look at this box scene and what's been set up here and you can actually just copy it and then replace it with your own sprites and use that to get started. Okay, so a little bit more quick demoing in the platformer level. As I mentioned, we have stackable boxes. The ground underneath has to have that collision on layer 11, but as long as it does, we can keep stacking until we get to the ceiling or so on and so forth. And you can see this ground here has not been marked as actually uh, being buildable layer 11. So that's why we can't build on here, even though there's technically a tile underneath. So I think this works pretty well, and that's basically how it works. So we can also, in this scene, of course, go ahead and rotate our different character objects. Now, uh, when you do rotate something like a rhino, you can see that we probably want to update the AI to take account of how it is uh, flipped upside down. But I think it is just suitably ridiculous how you can do this as things are set up. Uh, but that's just a uh, thing you have to account for if you actually are going to be rotating your objects is what direction are they going to be facing when you actually place them into your scene. Uh, but that's just a scripting thing. And then we have strawberries. So if I wanted to place a bunch of pickups, pretty easy to do that. And just dragging across the screen. And now I can go ahead and eat all of them. So that's basically all the new changes in the grid building system version 2.2. Uh, I've been Chris. Thank you for watching to the end of this tutorial. And if you want to check out my plugin, you can find more about it on itch.io, ArtStation, Ko-Fi, and also Patreon. So until my future Godot video content, I will see you in the next video.